How do I hook up a tape recorder? <laughs> now, I haven't heard that question in many, many years. And it comes to us from Charlie in Louisville. Louisville, I assume Kentucky. My wife bought a vintage TIAC reel-to-reel for Christmas, lucky you, and I wonder how I can hook it up to my newer system, which is one of our products, a Stellar Gain Cell and a Stellar Monoblock. I have a couple of systems and can hook it up to the older ones with tape monitors, but it seems most new systems have stopped including tape monitors. Thanks, Charlie. Well, that's a really good question, and manufacturers like PS Audio, like just about every company that's manufacturing equipment has stopped putting tape monitors on. Why? Because nobody has tapes anymore. And it would be just, you know, it's as useless as whatever. Um, so for those of you who actually are lucky enough to have been gifted a tape deck, which, you know, that's kind of fun. My, I know my, my son, Scott, uh, he is totally into it. He's got a reel-to-reel. -reel, he's got a cassette deck. I mean, I've, I know people that have started talking about going back to eight tracks. And there's this nostalgia thing, whether it's a turntable, whether it's getting away from all of our cell phones and stuff. We, we always we strive to get the best technology we possibly can. And once we get there, we're unhappy because it's pulled us away from the physical, touchy-feely things that, that we kind of interacted with. And then we start going back and we retro. We go, oh, that was kind of nice when we picked up an album. That was kind of cool. Now, I mean, I pick up my iPad and it's, it's, it's bitching the way it works. I mean, I, I have the entire world of music at the touch of my finger, but my finger is touching a piece of glass. What I really would like is something physical, something cool. I saw a comment that somebody made just recently on our forums, and he said, you know, I think that CD manufacturers originally blew it when they decided to package it in a plastic, uh, you know, box, right? So you can picture what a CD looks like when it's packaged in this little plastic jewel case. And an LP, of course, is big and it has liner notes and you get a lot of pictures. Where in a CD, if you want, there are really no liner notes. And if you want to, they have to have a little book and you pull the little book out and you can never get the little book back into the stupid jewel case, right? And it's like, ah, hate it. So this guy said, it's too bad that they didn't make a package, a slightly thicker package, because you don't really need a whole lot of thickness, you know, for a sleeve for a CD, right? And put the liner notes and put the rear thing and put it into the size of an album. And then people would have their albums and then they would have the exact same package next to their albums with their CDs. And you pull this out and I, at first I thought, well, that's stupid, you know? And then, actually, that's not so stupid. That's, that, I thought that was actually a pretty interesting thought. I'm noodling on that. I, I don't know what to make of that, but I, you know, we are starting our own label with Gus Skinnis in, in the new recording studio, and we're going to start pumping out uh, high-resolution audio tracks that are going to be really good. So, but anyway, how did I get onto that subject? Tape recorders. Yeah, so tape recorders. Um, all right, so what did we want a tape loop for? Well, a tape loop, and in particular, the re uh, the rec the wreck out or the, the tape out, right? So what was that? Well, that was a way of having a fixed volume so that customers could <clears throat> record whatever they wanted to. So let's say, you, and this is back in the day of albums, right? So you put an album on and then you crank the volume up to wherever you want to listen to it. And as you're doing that, you're copying the album. It's illegal. You're not supposed to do that, but that's what we did with tape recorders, right? And that's what started all this brouhaha. So for, the, for those that want to tape, you want to always have sort of a fixed level that it comes out at, and then you, then you turn up and down your recording levels on the tape deck. So in your Stellar Gain Cell DAC, 
it's not quite as convenient as what I just described, but what you can do is simply uh, uh, hook a, a home, the home theater bypass option up. And you'll, you'll just look in your owner's manual and you'll see how to set the HT bypass mode, which sets a fixed volume for any specific input. And the reason we did that is so that if you wanted to use the, 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 the gain cell DAC or one, any one of our products, um, and, and a number of companies do this, as a home theater device, you don't want the volume control going up and down, right? You want it to pass through without mucking up with the volume control. So that's a simple way to just set the home theater bypass on a fixed volume level and then just simply connect the outputs of the gain cell DAC preamp to the record inputs on your tape deck, your new TAC, and you'll have that fixed level that you wanted to. And it's, it's not perfect because, uh, it, well, it just isn't, but um, that's about the best we can do because we don't really accommodate tape decks. And if you want, uh, paul at psaudio.com, you can email me and we can chat about it, see if there's anything else we could help you with. But uh, it sounds like you had a great Christmas and congratulations. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.